You're pre-approved. You've been searching for homes online and in person with your real estate professional doing showings and you finally found the home that you're looking for. You found one you're interested in and you've decided to write an offer. So today, let's break down what exactly is an offer, what it means to you as a buyer and some of the common information that can be found within an offer. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric Schwinard and I'm a realtor with Hometown Realtors here in Massachusetts. So to get started, let me just first say that, you know, this is one part of the overarching home buying process. So inevitably in each of these videos, I'm going to end up having to refer back to one of my previous videos. So if you missed any of my previous videos, I will try to put the links down below so you can go back and watch them and you'll know what I'm referring to. So let's start off by defining what an offer actually is. So in the most simple general terms possible, an offer is a written agreement between a buyer and a seller for the purpose of transferring ownership of a property in exchange for money. The offer is really the first step towards actual ownership in that um, what the offer does is it really sets the parameters for the entire transaction. Overall, it sets the groundwork and all the foundation that will get you from this point to the point where you get the keys and you take ownership of the home. Here in Massachusetts, we have an approved form that almost all real estate professionals will use to write an offer. It was approved by the Massachusetts Association of Realtors and it looks like this. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go through almost line by line and I'm just gonna let you know what information goes into an offer so that when it comes time for you to write an offer yourself, you have a basic understanding of what information is contained within the form. First and foremost, an offer is gonna have your name and your current address as the buyer as well as the seller's name and the seller's address. To go back to my generalized definition of an offer. An offer is a written agreement between a buyer and a seller. So the first thing the offer is going to establish is who's the buyer and who's the seller. Next, the form requires the name and brokerage of your real estate professional. Now there's a couple of reasons why this information is important. So first of all, this information is important because it once again establishes who that agent is there to represent in the transaction. So if you didn't get to this point when you were looking to work with a real estate professional, then you have another opportunity here when you're going into the offer to figure out who it is that that agent is representing. So also the seller has that same right to know who's representing who in a transaction. So in addition to reestablishing it for you as the buyer, it also establishes for the seller who is representing the buyer because the second reason it's important is your real estate professional is going to be your point of contact throughout the transaction from this point forward so it also establishes who the agent is so that everybody knows who the point of contact is on this transaction going forward next the offer is going to establish what property it is that is looking to be transferred in ownership so it needs a property address as well as, generally speaking, the book and page number for the deed for the current owner. Now, you as a buyer don't need to know that. That's just something that your real estate professional is going to put into the offer for you. So just so you know, it's just establishing what property is being sold and it just also adds a list of ownership so that they can verify the seller is, in fact, has the right to sell the property. Moving on, we have the offer price. Now, this is going to be an important step in your home buying process because once you've found the home that you're interested in, the next thing you have to decide is how much do you want to offer the seller for the home? Now, this is where it becomes extremely important that you have a good working rapport with your real estate professional because when it comes to deciding how much to offer, your real estate professional is going to have 
great insight into what the condition of the current market is and what would be a reasonable offer to make to the seller for the property. Furthermore, I just wanted to also add, you know, this is where it comes down to another really important reason why you as a buyer should have your own buyer's representation, okay? Because when you have an agent that's representing you, so when you have a designated buyer's agent, it's that agent's fiduciary duty to represent your financial interests. So when they're telling you what they recommend you offer or what they think is a fair offer price for a home, they're doing that to try to give you the best position to succeed and also trying to make sure that you're getting the best possible deal. Different circumstances can change what is allowable. In some situations, you can offer exactly what they're asking. In some situations, you can ask less than what they're asking. And in some instances, you're gonna to wanna to offer more than what they're offering. Now, in this situation, I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of those details. All I'm gonna say at this point is, work closely with your real estate professional. They know the market conditions and they have a really good idea about what a fair market value is for the home that you're looking at and that you're interested in. And they're going to be able to advocate for you to what you should offer. Immediately following the offer price is an area where you set the deposit amounts. Now, this has been, in my experience, one of the most contentious and most common areas that buyers and particularly first time home buyers get confused about because chances are nobody probably mentioned anything to you about a deposit prior to this point. When you were working with your lender to get your pre-approval, they may have mentioned your down payment. They may have talked about closing costs. They may have even talked about, you know, the cost of an appraiser, but they probably didn't tell you about the deposits. So, Here's what you need to know. In almost every home transaction, there are generally two deposits that are required from you as a buyer. The first is due with the offer, and it is a way to show a seller that you are a serious buyer. The second deposit, which is usually larger than the first one, is due when you sign the purchase and sale agreement. Now, Again, I'm not gonna get into the purchase and sale agreement here. That's coming in a later video because that's another step in the process. But for now, you need to know that there's gonna be two deposits that are required for you to purchase a home. The first one is generally smaller. The second one is usually larger. There are no set requirements as far as what these deposits have to be. Ultimately, it comes down to what your budget can allow. So they can really be anything that they, you need them to be. You know, when I bought my house, uh, my first deposit was $100, my second deposit was $900. Um, most commonly, what I see here in Massachusetts is the first deposit is usually $500, the second deposit is usually $1,000. But it doesn't matter. If you don't have $1,500, it can be $250 and $750, $100 and $900. It can be almost anything that you need it to be. It just need to have two because again, this is gonna show the seller that you're a serious buyer. You have money that you're willing to put on the line to buy this home. The next thing that the offer is going to establish is the timetable for completion. So as I previously mentioned in my generalized description is that the offer sets the foundation on which the entire transaction is going to be built. So that includes a timetable to completion. So for you as a buyer, here's what you need to know. Generally speaking, the home buying process from the offer point to closing when you get handed the keys and you take ownership takes on average between four to six weeks. You should plan at least four to six weeks that you are going to be going through the actual purchasing transaction. If you have a USDA loan product, USDA tends to take a little bit longer than most other transactions. So if you have a USDA loan type, you're probably looking at more like six to eight weeks. And part of the reason for that is, well, most loans, you know, they submit all the information to the loan company, they review it and they make the decision. But with USDA, you have the lender who compiles all the information. They then have to send it to USDA, who then also has to review all the information. They make the decision, 
and then send it back to the lender who can then move the deal forward. So because of that extra step, it does take a little bit of extra time. Next, the offer is going to establish who the escrow holder is. So those two deposits that I mentioned a few minutes ago, those monies are not, they don't go directly to the seller. They get held in an escrow account. So the offer establishes who is going to be responsible for holding those funds until the transaction is complete. In most cases, the escrow holder is usually the listing agent's brokerage. The, every brokerage has an escrow account for holding deposits. So usually whoever the list agent's office is, they're the ones that are gonna hold the offer that are gonna hold those deposits. Speaking of those deposits, I mentioned that those deposits are to prove to the seller that you are a serious buyer. So that's true, but you should know that there are safe falls built into the offer that are there to protect your money. So to protect those deposits, so that if something goes awry, that falls under one of these fall safes, you get that deposit money back. The seller can't keep it. The first one of those fall safes, those fail safes that are built into the offer are the mortgage contingency. So what this means to you is if you are unable to secure a mortgage, so if for any reason the lender decides they can't give you a mortgage on this home, you don't lose that deposit money. The second fail safe that's built into the offer is the home inspection contingency. So as a buyer, you have the right to have an inspection completed by a licensed home inspector on a property. Now, I'm not gonna get a lot into home inspections in this video because that is going to be my next video. So if you wanna know more about home inspectors and home inspections, make sure you check out the video that'll be coming soon. For the sake of this video, just know you have the right to have a home inspection. You have between 10 and 14 days, depending on how it's written into the offer, to have a home inspection completed. If for any reason you are unsatisfied with the results of the home inspection, you have the right to back out of the transaction and you get your deposits back. So there is sort of a third contingency built into an offer, but it's really kind of tied into the first contingency, the mortgage contingency, but uh, it's the appraisal contingency. So you can only be responsible for buying a home that's worth the amount of money that you're offering. Your lender is likely going to require that you have an appraisal done. A licensed appraiser is gonna come out, <clears throat> they're gonna establish the value of the home, and if that value is below what you're trying to pay for the home, you're, you are gonna have that protection in place where you can then back out. You don't have to overpay for a property. But like I said, that's not really actually built into the offer per se itself. It's mostly because the lender won't lend you money on a home that isn't worth what they're lending you. So no lender is going to lend you more money than the home is worth. So it really kind of falls under the mortgage contingency safe fall, but it's also sort of its own third fail safe also. So the last bit of information on the offer form is the additional term section. So this is your opportunity as a buyer to list out anything outside of what is listed elsewhere in the form that you want. So for instance, if you want to make sure that the range and refrigerator or the washer and dryer are staying with the property and it's not listed as such in the offer form, I mean in the listing sheet, you're going to want to put that in the additional terms that the range, refrigerator, washer and dryer are to convey with the property. Aside from requesting that appliances stay with the property, at least here in Massachusetts, and particularly here in the North Quabbin region of Massachusetts, one of the most common additional terms that we see in offers are a seller's concession. So I mentioned way back in my first video about getting pre-approval that it's possible that you may require some closing cost concession from a seller to help with your closing costs. 
So this is where that comes into play. So if you need some closing costs from the seller as part of your pre-approval, then the additional terms is the section where that gets noted. So whatever the amount is, that's gonna get written in there that the seller is to contribute that to you as the buyer. So once all that information is put onto the form, you sign and date the form and the written agreement is completed from your end. When it actually comes time to making an offer on a home, the offer form itself is actually only one part of the offer package that is required to actually make an offer on a home. The completed offer package includes the offer form, your pre-approval letter, a copy of the deposit check, and if necessary, a signed lead paint disclosure form. So once your full offer package is completed, your real estate professional will submit it to the seller's real estate professional who will then present it to the seller for consideration. Now, generally speaking, you will have an answer within 24 hours. Occasionally it takes 48 hours, but more often than not, you should have a response from the seller within 24 hours. Now, once your offer is submitted and a seller reviews it, there are basically three possible outcomes for your offer. Number one, your offer gets accepted, you move on. Number two, the seller declines your offer, you go back to the home search. Or number three, your offer starts negotiations with the seller where they counter offer with different terms that they find more agreeable to them. So. What's important to note here is that if you get a counter offer from a seller, number one, know that as soon as you receive that counter offer, your original offer is null and void. You are not required to accept a seller's counter offer. You now have those same three options that the seller has. You can accept their counter offer as written, you can decline it flat out, or you can then counter their counter with something else that you come up with. And that process will go on as long as necessary until you get to one of those other two options where either they accept it or they flat out decline it. So that's really all I had for today. I know it was kind of a lot of information, but you know, if you can get to the point where you get an offer accepted, you get to move on to the next phase. If you don't, you just have to keep going back to the home search process until you find one that sticks. Having a good real estate professional will help that happen sooner rather than later, but it can be difficult in a competitive market. So just know it may take a couple tries before you get one accepted, but you will eventually get one accepted. You will find a home. If you have any questions about anything, if there's anything you want more clarification about, feel free to drop me a comment below or find me on Facebook and Instagram at ESC Realtor. So if you enjoyed this video, if you found it informative, if you found it entertaining, please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out on future content. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.